we're doing this uh, this show, and then I'm also going to you know, cut it up a little bit, and uh, and well, not much, but just cut a little bit, and uh, um, it's for the uh, my arts academy as well as my TV film classes as well. So super cool as well. But we are live right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> There he is. There he is. So, uh, how's, uh, again, how's everyone doing? Doing all right? Are you hanging in there, Mark? I'm, I'm going to let mean, Mark talk. It's, uh, yeah, it's rough. I don't know. It's, we were supposed to have a, a festival screening over the weekend, so that was disappointing that we were, weren't able to do that. That would have been our second screening. For, so for it's tough to put the film on um, hold, but it's understandable with everything going on. All right, well... Um, Oh, we have her name. My kids are driving me crazy okay. too. Oh, over there, that's really. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a new thing here. It's a pretty cool, uh, uh, little uh, thing that we've been doing, and um, I've been doing a couple of shows. I interviewed Ming the other day, and then I, I, we just did Jack Mulcahy. He was just on right before you. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I, I caught the tail end of that. Oh, cool. Yeah, super cool. <laughs> uh, basically, kind of do the same thing. Uh, do, what do you really want to uh, talk about here? You want to uh, talk about the film and how he went through the process of making this short film. Um, and, and, oh, did you talk to Ming about showing it? Um, I asked Ming to at least, just at least post a link. Oh. I think it'll probably look better on everybody else's personal screens. Okay. So um, if, if it's down there, he's going to post the link to your new film. And it's yeah, so we just cut the, the trailer for the, the new trailer for the film. And, and you, uh, you were no telling me it, so or, that'll be and, um, uh, your, your students were doing something with it? No, they don't. Not not like the official stuff, but I let them color grade and oh. cut trailers of the film on their own. So, sorry, Helen. They they see your footage. Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, um, you gave me a great idea. Uh, um, I actually had my high school students, my um, my advanced classes, cut up the short film uh, short film curfew, and they all had to make like a promo for it. So that was actually a college thing. But I made them do it. Yeah, so I, I did that last semester, and that was like their favorite. Their favorite. Oh, there we go. That was there their I favorite. Am. Try to they make that face again. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it just the frozen thing, or is it playing? <laughs> is it going to play it? If it doesn't play, we can just post the link. Doesn't I, uh, I can play it. Uh, give me two seconds. I'll totally play it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, everyone, this is the time in between the seconds. And uh, um, earlier, uh, this year, I did show uh, my students a little clip, and they were like, what the heck is that? Oh, yeah, because you're in it, and you showed okay. them your clip. Yeah, so they saw that, and they liked that, so it, I'm sure they would love to see this. And just all of a sudden, see me appear in it. Oh, here we go, guys. Can we hear it or no? Do you still have them? They're more frequent now. She's in most of them. She? Your friend from the accident? Yes. Wendy, it's not healthy to bottle everything up inside. What do you think about going out with friends? Meet new people? I think it would be good for you. I don't know. Let me be clear. I certainly acknowledge your pain. And if you don't feel comfortable discussing things at this point, that's fine. What you do now is up to you. Is there anything you would like to talk about today? No. Wendy. All right. Oh, that was great. Yay. Some body comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The copy, all that. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, so why don't we get started with some questions? So, Helen, how did you get into this film? What did, what happened there? How did you get cast into this? Um, I had worked with Mark, or as it says on the side, on the little sidebar here, Marl. I'm just kidding. Um, I I had worked with Mark once before, and um, and uh, then I saw that he was casting this on backstage, and I just shot him a shot him a message, 
uh, sent him a tape and uh, went went from there and got it from there. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's from my side of things, anyway. <laughs> what about your side, Mark? Um, from my side, I've been trying to get Helen into a, a role for some time, but sometimes the best actress isn't the best person for a role, so it's always got to be a perfect fit. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, she was the only person that I auditioned. Like I had others lined up who were supposed to come after her, but she was so good that I just – I never did it before. The day the day of her, interview, uh, her uh, audition, I said, please do the movie with me, and she said yes, so that was history. Which I didn't know until you. Um, I, I read that you yeah. said that in an interview. Which I, I, I didn't know that until I read that in a in an article. Really? <laughs> I was very moved by that. <laughs> was it a recent article? Like yeah, yeah. I think it just came out. Yeah, yeah it just came out a couple of days ago. Oh, I should, I can post a link to. I can give uh, Ming the link to that. Ming can all. Um, yeah, essentially, I I wrote it a long time ago with um, some someone else in mind and never worked out. So I just kind of like put it on hold for a couple of years. Um, and it was, it's an expensive movie too. So I, I had to wait for the money. So, but I think Helen was born to play the role. So hopefully everybody. Comes out. So, uh, basically since, um, this is uh, for film students to, to, to watch and all that. So I wanted to know how this all started with you, Mark, like we all have our stories of how we got into film and, and, uh, how did this start for you back in high school, college? What, what made you get into this type of business? Um, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to like borrow cameras and me and my sister used to make like little movies and stuff like that. So I've always had like a passion for it. Um, I was a communications major in college. So I was like the VP of the local TV station. So we, ha we had a TV show over there. Um, but as far as like, actually getting the courage together and, and making something that really didn't happen until 2008 when I made a, a documentary with uh, my friend Pete who does all the music for our films. So, you know, I've been, I've been in the field for a long time, but as far as like actually making stuff, 2008, actually making like narrative stuff, only 2014, so only like six years. Yeah. I, I, I mean, 2010 was the first one I, I wrote and directed myself. I've been doing it most of my life too, but 2010 was the first directing. That was it. So it wasn't that, I mean, 10 years now, right? That's about it. Um, what about you, Helen? How did you get into acting? Oh, I mean, I've been doing it since I was a kid, but not, uh, not really professionally uh, until I was a teenager. But uh, yeah, I, I really got into it because I was good at reading. So the teachers put me in the plays because I could read pretty well. And, uh, which is kind of lovely because now it's sort of come full circle in this nice way. I do audiobooks now in addition to on camera and, you know, TV and theater and stuff like that. So I get to do the reading and the acting at the same time now, which is lovely. Have you started out in theater in New York? I did. Yeah, I started out in theater uh, and then I started to branch out because I think um, just the style of acting I enjoy doing the most is a little more subtle and a little more naturalistic. I still love theater. I do theater, but, um, but film, I felt really... Uh, like the medium was something that I felt like I could lend myself to really well. So, uh, so that's what I do mostly, but I, I still do theater. And I was actually, I was supposed to do uh, a show at, um, do you know the regional theater Luna stage? It's in uh, West orange. Oh. I, I had just booked a contract. I was going to be doing it and then all this happened. So we're going to do it in the fall instead. Yeah. We, we were going to go to see some plays for school and things like mm -hmm. that and musicals and uh, have that all set and, I recently saw Shakespeare over here, which was amazing. And yeah, yeah. But now everything is just stopped to a halt, you know. Well, oh. I'll let you know. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Casting is everything. That's nice. It's a great action shot, Mark. It is. Looking what, good. <laughs> what set it's that? From? My tough pose. <laughs> what movie set is this from? This picture. This is from um, our first film. Our, we made a feature drama called Before the Snow. Yeah. Um, me and my friend Pete. He's on left there. We yeah. co-wrote, co-directed it, um, made it for eighteen thousand dollars, and you made this locally as well, didn't you? Yeah, that's his backyard in Red Bank. <laughs> so we so. shot eighteen days in a row at his back uh, at his house. And a feature film. That's where I first met you. Or in uh, film festivals with this film. Exactly. So that's where I met CJ. We took this to uh, Hoboken International Film Festival, which was uh, up in Middletown, New York, that year. And I think that's the first time I saw you. And you're like. 
oh, you got a new album. It's called Hotel. <laughs> Let me play it at my festival. Oh, well, now I'm there. <laughs> there was no, another thing about Helen, and um, she didn't say, I mean, she's like the voiceover work, but um, for that, for the feature? Um, no, no, no. For, I'm, I have, I'm getting to it. Uh, so she's she's also a singer, so that's why she has a good voice, a lot of voiceover work, because her she's got a cool voice. <laughs> and um, there's actually a, a scene in our our new movie where they uh, two people have to sing together on a couch. So that's what she auditioned for. So she came in. Um, they had a guitar, and the actual audition was them singing to me, like serenading me. Yeah, yeah. Actually, and. <laughs> I'll admit it. I, I actually cried. So, yeah. Just, who wrote this song? Was it Pete? Um, no, it's actually a, a. I didn't know this till later, but uh, Helen and I had a mutual interest in a in a particular artist uh, named Keaton Henson. So the the movie is really based around um, the emotions of his his songs. I just wanted to like live in that space in movie form, and. Um, my director's reel from a couple of years ago, I put one of his songs behind it. And then I saw something on Vimeo of Helen's where she was dancing to a Keaton Henson song. Yeah. So like, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah so, I've been a huge same, fan for a long song. time. It's like an album of instrumentals and she picked the same song that, that, that I did and he's got like, you know, 50 songs. So it was, it was, I don't know. It was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah, I was, but well, when I got the script, you know, in hand and I started reading it and I saw that that was something that you'd included, I was like, oh, I got very, like, I was really excited and moved because I think you and I both, uh, we have a lot of music taste in common. And I really think that I was just saying this to someone earlier. I think that music can really like transport a film from good to great sometimes. Like, it can just take you exactly where the mood is that the director is trying to bring you to. And uh, like, I just was, I was so excited about it when I saw this song that I love and appreciate and just think is such like beautiful art. It was such a nice thing to see. I really think that music does change a film. It makes yeah. it much better. And, and CJ, um, and speaking of Keaton Henson, you know my last film, uh, one of my last films, The Last Visit? Yes. Um, sad movie about the old man and little girl. When they were um, waiting to come on set, um, I would just play like Keith Henson on repeat to get like, there was like this corner of the room where it was like the sad corner and they had to come and do their sad scene. So um, I, I was, I didn't do that to Helen though. So. <laughs> I mean, apparently Brie Larson, when she did Williamstown, she played this, uh, I think it was like Brian Eno. She played this like one song when she was doing Our Town, she would play it during the intermission to get her into what she wanted to do. And everybody, everyone's process is different, but uh, but I thought that was an interesting detail and the song's beautiful. Yeah, again, a music team. I mean, you have a, a great guy that does a lot of your scores. Pete does a lot of the, the work there, right? And then, but also picking and choosing songs like that 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 fit your film. Um, I know uh, when we we were talking about Curfew before, um, and they, they did the movie Before I Disappear, that director um, and uh, the music, he picked the right songs for that movie, don't you think so, Mark? Yeah, and he he actually wrote that theme song with the the bowling alley dancing. Yep. scene with the little girl so he wrote that i gave my students that song with the movie and they, they cut a trailer to it it was it's pretty cool yeah that, that movie's amazing that's probably the best short film i've ever seen yeah so i just but i just the music really changed it so i love films that the music is so powerful that it really fits the film well and i think a lot of your films do that and especially mm -hmm. this new one so the one that uh that we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah, it's, only, it's only screened once and you were there and thanks for your support. Yeah, so that was, it, it, didn't you get into another festival? Um, it's in a bunch now, but everything's yeah, uh, well, canceled for now, for or postponed at least, yeah. Uh, was it Queens, Queens one? Did that no, happen? not Queens World. Um, Trenton, Trenton was supposed to be this past weekend, they postponed. Oh. Um, New York Filmmakers. Uh, Filmmakers New York is in April. That's yes. going to be online, but then they'll have a, another date later on. So we get, get two screenings out of that one. And then what's the other one? International Filmmaker um, New York Festival. Um, and I think that is, I don't, I don't remember the date of that, like June or something. Yeah, so. I think I, I compiled a little list. Um, you know, while we talk about other stuff, I'll see if I can find it. But I had a little list of some of the stuff that had been accepted to. And, and you applied to, uh, so I don't like it shouldn't be touching my face. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 
so you put it into a lot of other festivals that are coming soon as well that you haven't heard from yet, obviously. Oh yeah, the list is long. It's just, um, I think a lot of the notifications come in April, so I should start. Mm -hmm. So the percentage, acceptance percentage is pretty decent for a longer movie, 26 minutes. I know it's hard, hard for some festivals to program. They'd rather like play three eight minute movies, but- But it's um, worth it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I just got a message here to uh, get better lighting. I'm like, that's all I got. <laughs> oh, you need a ring light. I do. I don't have any. Get light. on that ring light wave, CJ. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so. I don't know what I think I'm talking about. I've got like some oh. little like outdoors Christmas lights <laughs> hanging out here. This is it. This is all the lights I got here. So, oh well. Mm -hmm. I think people should be a little more gentle since we're in quarantine. We can't we can't get access to our professional studio level equipment, right? I do. Have, I just brought them all to school. I left them there. <laughs> took, well, I took my camera home now, so I'm like, yeah, I didn't have got anything yet. But what are you gonna do? So this time, uh, what are you guys doing during this? Are you are you being creative? I'm, I'm doing a lot of this stuff, a lot of schoolwork, but um, my mind is going crazy. I got to sit down and write. So I, I'm thinking of writing mm -hmm. a lot of things. I don't know if you're in that mood to to maybe write some stuff, Mark, or uh, Ellen, if you're writing I'm, anything or making music. I made a trailer. That's, that's, <laughs> hey, that's, that's something. That's what i the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I, I work from a distance anyway, so um, oh, that's not changing. Anyway, right? Yeah, so it's a distraction for like the wife and kids to be home. Yeah. So I'm, I'm less efficient, but um, nothing's changed besides I haven't seen my other family in like two, three weeks, which is sad, but yeah. how about you, Helen? Um, I've been really trying to take advantage of the time because uh, my two, uh, you know, roommates there they left, so I'm uh, I'm alone in the apartment. I have it to myself. I've been writing a lot, a lot of music. Uh, Mark, new album coming up. I know you're gonna be excited for that. Um, Mark, Mark's really sweet about supporting my music, which is very nice. But uh, yeah, I've been writing poems. I wrote a play. I'm just like churning stuff out since I've got the time. So yeah, lots of writing and painting. A lot of painting. Uh, that's what a lot of people, I think, during this time are, are working on their artistic things. And hopefully, I was just talking to uh, Jack Mulcahy about it. Uh, hopefully, when this is over, everyone's just going to go crazy and film this and that and mm -hmm. play. And so I, we're, we're hoping that after all this, everyone's going to, you know, all this creative stuff and go out there and just start filming and plays and musics and, 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 and we'll all get back. To that's a great way to think about it. I, I like thinking of it that way. That's the light at the end of this uh, kind of not so creative tunnel. <laughs> it seemed like, you know, started out like a crazy busy year in the business and in this industry, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, <sighs> we'll see. Hopefully uh, it'll be busy on the other side too. Uh, Mark, what else are you working on? Are you got any other ideas coming up in the future? Any short films or feature films? Or no, this film like almost killed me. So I'm just trying to like take a break and, um, <laughs> Maybe 2021 at the earliest for anything else. Uh, it was just because it was like in pre-production for two years. We were in production for what six months, and then it took me six to seven months to edit it. Yeah. So I'm just like exhale right now. But uh, I do have like a ton of scripts, um, so I'm ready to go for like early 2021. There you go. If anybody's interested, just reach out. Let's see, and then. Um Recently, you have another film that's out there right now, Crazy for the Blonde, that you you directed and written by Tom Bragg. And Yeah, uh, right in the middle of this one, which was... I know. It's like... Um, but I couldn't say no. The script was so good. It's it's really crazy and in inappropriate. And um, I like to kind of go back and forth between the dramas and, like, the inappropriate comedy or horror. So it's, it's fun to take a break and switch genres. Uh, that film, I guess it's about like halfway through its run. I think it's been in 24 festivals. Um, wow. Which is way more than I've ever been in, but Tom just, Tom right, knows how to work yeah. the festival circuit. His last film got into 50 festivals, so. <laughs> Good for him. It's insane, yeah. A couple wow. of um, LA screenings, which I wish I could there it is. Uh, attend. There he is. Yeah. Helen, we're gonna have to get at least one LA screening out of ours. We gotta. We just gotta. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, there's gonna be plenty of screenings. You're gonna have a lot of film festivals, I'm sure. How crazy for the blonde. I was watching it online the other day at the Garden State Film Festival. 
Yeah, like, I didn't I didn't um, get online, but I heard the quality was pretty good as far as like the stream they put out, which I was happy about. It did look good. Here. I was watching it right here on my Mac that I'm talking on right now, and it looked really good. So, congrats on that. It was a yeah. So, if anybody read that article that came out, I did put like a little hint to Tom Bragg that I wanted to direct his next movie. So I keep bugging him about it. And, so. and would that film possibly be a script that I know? Yeah, I think it's won. <laughs> um, it's won some awards for uh, screenplay. It's called Layers. Yes. It's so freaking good. I, I can't I believe it. I said I'm in on that too. So I think I owe some money. <laughs> I said, I'll, I'll. You say you want to give us some money? I Well, I, I was hoping you forgot, but now I just reminded you. Mm. Yes. Yes. We're, we're taking $500 donations. No problem. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, I, I, will, I will back that a little bit. But it's the perfect story. It's the perfect length. Um, it's the type of story that festivals eat up. It's like a uh, complicated love story. It's really good. And I'm surprised that's coming from him after Crazy for the Blonde and Photo Kill. He's, he's got some range, so it's, it's nice to see. Any characters for Helen to be in? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> um, so the main character, uh, so it's like an, an overweight guy falls in love with this short, young ice cream parlor um cashier girl it sounds so um cool. hello it's so damn well written yeah so it, here i am scooping <laughs> just kidding no pressure but uh tom we're gonna talk <laughs> after all that hype come on can you blame me you fit, you fit the age range so it's <laughs> Well, the the first uh, festival that we got to see the film in, it was a good time in uh, in New York City in Brooklyn. Um, wasn't it in the same building that you filmed in? Oh wow, I, I I totally forgot about that. Yeah, our first scene on our first day in Brooklyn in uh, 2019 December was it? Or was it 2018? Uh, I think it might have been 2018. 2018. Like, and no. very end of 2018, I feel and like. it was snowing, and there was supposed to be this crazy snowstorm. Right. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't know if the, the train from Montclair was going to make it, so Ellen Ubered all the way from Montclair. Oh, it's so crazy. There wouldn't be any delay. <laughs> wow. And I was, like, sweating. I was like, oh, my God, not on the first day, you know? It was a big scene, too. It was. Yeah. It was. Huge scene, yeah. It's been in both trailers now. Um, CJ, you failed to remember that Helen actually won a particular award that night, too. Oh, I, I was getting, uh, yeah. He's yeah, ramping getting, up. He's ramping up. up. He's ramping up. <laughs> Got ahead. Oh, yeah. that, that, I have to do it. Yeah. So you did. You did. You won. What did you win? I, I won Best Actress, which was uh, really, really sweet and unexpected. But yeah, I was very honored. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a good one right out right out the gate. This is like a an actor's movie, so um, when your actors perform, that means you know things are, are working. So that was uh, well deserved. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, it was really sweet. It was a nice a nice night. So yeah, congrats on that. That's uh, that, yeah, first time in the whole <laughs> out and win like that. That's pretty. We good. We started well, and we we won a couple of other things that night too. I just don't remember because I was sort of like, "What me a winner?" So I don't. You should you, you should tell them what else we won. <laughs> we won two. We won two. We were nominated for six. Color. Um, so we were nominated for like best short film, best cinematography, um, I think best supporting actor, best featured actress for. Right, I uh, think uh, Pal uh, Palmera was uh, nominated as well. Oh, Pal, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a, yeah, that was her. Um, and, but we did win Best Color, which color, yeah. I was kind of happy about from the technical standpoint of things, because I did work hard on the color. No, no nominations for but Best Cameo of a Guy. No Best Cameo of a Guy? <laughs> best Angry Dad Award? You're always going to win that. You know that. <laughs> what You're the best angry dad in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> That was a lot of fun. So, you know, I don't act too much anymore. So that was, it's always fun when I get to go and do that once every once in a while. And and just to let you know, it took, um, when I did a disco prize, it took about 30 film festivals before I won an award. So. Whoa. You got one in the first one. So that's yeah. But you hadn't met Mark yet. Had you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I was trying to, I was trying to be like, well, you, you yeah. know what I was going for there. I don't know. Dennis, Dennis is pretty talented. 
yeah. So he has a new film out as well, I think. So I haven't even I haven't seen it, but I saw him promoting it. So uh, with Palmera. Yeah. Yeah. Small yeah. world. Yeah. And right. Mark, I don't know if you I don't know if I've mentioned this to you, but um me and Palmera uh, we're we've become writing partners and we're we're writing some stuff together. Uh, more info to come, but uh, but it's because of you and because of this film that we even met and became dear friends, and uh, now we're working on getting something produced. That's yeah, like, I think you hinted at it, but I didn't know you guys were like full into it. Full oh, on. We're doing it. I got I got Celtics open right now. <laughs> That's yeah, the we um, we we did a rehearsal in Union City, and she came to do a uh, a scene with us, and. Um, yeah, they were like best friends on day one. It was pretty strange. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened there, but uh, but we just we get along real well, and she's oh, uh, she's gosh. become one of my dearest friends ever. Sorry? When she auditioned, we um, when uh, Palmera auditioned, we didn't have a role for her because we we had somebody else in mind. So, but we wanted her so bad that um, uh, we ended up changing the gender of another character, and then like it was Eric, and we changed the Erica, oh, and then. Right. Uh, well, didn't have was, enough lines. Yeah, she, and then, she uh, was like auditioning for this role that, like, I mean, she did a lovely job, but it just wasn't, you know, like the actor has to be really right for it, and it was just some. She wasn't perfect for this part, but I was like, oh, Mark, we got to put her in this. She's so yeah. good. So we auditioned so, for your role yeah. too, and then oh yeah, oh I didn't even know that. Interesting. And I, I think I asked her to read for the other one. Yeah. And then Colette came in and just she was. She really nailed it. Yeah. Rebecca. Um, but there was no way that we were not going to have her in the film. So, and then CJ, yeah. we ended up writing a, a new scene for her. Yeah, and it's so good. Like, it's not fair. She's too good. <laughs> have you? I, I thought you've done that before. Maybe that was the one you're talking to me about. Like, where you, you see someone come in and you have to change the part for that person. Have you done that more than once? Not to this extent. Um, the I don't know if you know, but the the little boy who plays your son is actually uh, a little girl yeah um and just goes for uh both gender so i thought that was the coolest thing in the world yeah um i wouldn't if you didn't I easily know, change it to a girl it didn't matter but it's the way uh you know, she was acting i i probably wouldn't even guess that if you yeah she was pretty incredible i was like i was really blown away and i i loved i loved seeing all the different auditions and all these like different takes on that role. And she just, she really hit it out of the park. Yeah. And she was very inexperienced, which um, I wasn't really scared about because I worked with inexperienced kids before, but there was like this other kid who was just so experienced and so awesome. And it was such a hard choice, but you just kind of like at the end of the day, just go with your gut and like what, you know, you, you have a picture in your head of what the person looks like and what they, how they talk. Um, and, she was just the person, so. Mm -hmm. And you've worked with kids before, like the last um, bit. Yeah, yeah, I worked with a lot of kids. Um, and everybody always says kids are a nightmare on set or whatever, and I've never experienced that once. Um, Me neither. I have not found that to be true. Like, they're, they're sometimes thought, they're the most professional people on that set. They're not on their phones the whole time. Like, they're really, like, on it. And a lot of it. They're always off book. <laughs> true, true, very true. And as a child actor, I was too. <laughs> I've lost some brain cells since then. But <laughs> oh, so um, well. Anyway, I just wanted to. Uh, so, well, what's next? What's the next few film festivals that's up for uh, that? It's lined up. Oh, Helen was retrieving a list, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Some of these might be like the same thing, but they have different names. But uh, the list of stuff I have is uh, Manhattan Film Festival, uh, International Filmmaker Festival of New York, New Filmmakers New York, and Trenton. Okay. I so don't think they're all off. I don't think it's in Manhattan. I think that's crazy for blonde. No. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Maybe I misread them. I don't know. But, uh, that's kind of the list that I have. Yeah, the only reason I didn't commit to Manhattan is because I, I just figured we'll wait till next year because having two films in, I don't know, it's going to like lessen your chances or sure, you're, like, sure. you're, you're the douchebag with two films in a festival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're well, never a douchebag, Mark. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So what we about have our, our own night? We don't want to share it with I got Tom you, and, though. No, I, I um, get it. Those crazy kids. Yeah, so. just us. Yeah. <laughs> Butt out. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine the, like your films playing back to back in the same set and all that kind of stuff with the two different crowds? And all that? 
Gray Machine Films Double Feature. I just, that's I that's my voiceover I, voice there. Well, you're a guy I've 500 times. I really I gotta zone out. I can't watch it. I I have oh I it's real hard for me to watch these. I at the um the uh, festival from before that we were all at. I um I just kind of sat there like this, and Pal kind of like held my hand, and I was like, I can't watch this. I kept like kind of peeking through my fingers because it's it's hard to watch yourself, man. It really is. I love and watching. I was on screen for 26 minutes too. I know. I was like, oh, I'm in every scene. Every okay. That long. Yeah, that whoever whoever was helping you edit that poor poor dear. <laughs> I did not realize it was that long because it saw when it moved, so it, it really did not feel that long at all. Yeah. Thank exactly. you. I, I did I did cut it down. I, I I'm not going to tell anybody oh. um, what scenes I deleted, but there were two deleted scenes, and it was like a 23 minute version. I'm out. And it just wasn't flowing. It felt like things were missing, and I'm like, I got to release a shorter version, and then I just. I was like, screw festivals. If they don't want to play a 26 minute film, then I don't want I don't want it in a festival. So it, it worked, it was written this way. It's gotta be that way, so. You're gonna tell me after we aren't live anymore, I tell, right? I, I, I'm curious, I wanna know. But anyway, that's for later. Cut me out. <laughs> CJ, I didn't cut you out. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's all right. I get, I get cut out of a lot of stuff, so that's why I said that. Um, hey, it, it happens uh, it was, to every it actor, was, it's a rite of passage. It was the doctor scene that was. Oh, yeah. Out. And obviously, um, G is probably the most no, uh, talented and most famous actor in, in the whole cast. So obviously, it had nothing to do with you two. It's just it was a story thing. But we could yeah. we could chat. It's back in. It's not going sure. anywhere. But, yeah, that's uh, one of my favorites because it was one of my favorites to do. But it, it's probably more of a uh, memory value rather than like it's hard for me to judge it. Uh, Kind of like an out as an outside party because I'm so biased because like you know I just remember what was happening that day or like what I ate that's, and like that's a standalone scene it is it's 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 great but sometimes in the context of the other oh, scene certainly I'm what I'm trying to say is that I am a very biased judge and like I would not be the right person to decide what stays and what goes because I'm I'm thinking about other stuff. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes is by Darren Aronofsky. He said, "You're not done editing until you kill one of your babies." So and that's. That's that means fair. removing your favorite scene from the movie. Like, you can't be precious. Yeah, but that's true. It's true. I, I, I didn't listen to his advice, and I was precious. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were. <laughs> well, I wanted to, I want to thank you guys for coming on here. And, uh, um, well, before you go, uh, since we're, this is also for my students, I was wondering if each one of you could give some advice. I know you, you do acting. You do music. So if, uh, we have musicians, we have singers and actors and artists and all this kind of stuff. So if you could give like some little advice to the students, uh, Helen, that'd be great. Ooh, that's a, that's a big tall order, but uh, I guess my, uh, my best advice, uh, well, it's a concept and I will try to explain it in brief, uh, but it's this concept called uh, negative capability. And it's actually John Keats, the poet, he wrote this phrase into a letter. And what it basically means, and I'm gonna butcher it a little bit, but the idea is basically to kind of revel in the unknown and not being, you know, being comfortable in the uncomfortable. And uh, just, essentially the idea is don't act like you know everything because then you won't. Uh, if you if you accept the fact that you don't know everything and accept, you know, make yourself open to learning and open to, you know, understanding new things all the time, then you're going to learn so much more than if you kind of walk around like, yeah, I know everything. So I just think that that, uh, that paired with empathy are like the two big whammy tools of an artist. Thanks. What about you, Mark? Just a writer. Um, I guess a couple of things. The first thing is um, I don't think writers and directors are anything special. I think it's the, the actors that they cast. So if you cast the right person with a bad script, I think you could still get a good movie. Uh, if you cast uh, a, a person, an actor who was not meant to be in the role in a great script, I think the movie won't turn out great. So I think it's all, it really is based on on, on your casting. And then for editors, um, go buy the book um, In the Blink of an Eye by Walter Murch, who mm. edited Apocalypse Now, The Godfather, uh, does sound design for all those movies. He's like the godfather of, of everything. And I, I like follow his Bible as far as editing towards emotion, and all the criteria that he lists. So it's a great resource. It's a short, it's like a 70 page book, but it's like my Bible. So I make all my students buy it. You should you can tell your students to get it. <laughs> they probably don't want to read a huge book anymore. I have all these old books on the shelf, but we just do a lot of internet stuff. 
But, hey, there is no excuse right now. You got all the time in the world, kids. <laughs> you right. better read. <laughs> I'm talking about two and three page chapters. It's just written in like a conversational tone. It's super short. That sounds it's great. It's like the non-book lover's book. Yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> sounds good. Well, thanks for coming on, guys. And, uh, and hopefully we'll get out of this soon and we'll start making some more films. Hey, sounds good. Mm, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. See you.